Hello everyone. Have you ever stopped to wonder where your thoughts come from? One moment you're mindlessly scrolling through your phone, and the next you're pondering the mysteries of the universe. It's a seamless process that happens in the blink of an eye, but there's so much more to it than meets the eye. Today we'll delve into the intricacies of the human mind to understand how thoughts form. To begin, let's discuss what a thought actually is. Thoughts are mental cognitions that occur within the mind. They can be ideas, images, or even emotions. Thoughts are the cornerstone of human consciousness and the driving force behind our actions and decisions. In short, thoughts make us who we are. But how do they form? To answer that, we must journey through the complex labyrinth that is the human brain. The brain is a highly sophisticated organ that weighs around 1.4 kilograms and contains about 86 billion neurons. These neurons are nerve cells that act as the building blocks of the nervous system, including the brain. They communicate through tiny electrical signals. When neurons fire or send out a signal, they are essentially contributing to the formation of thoughts. So how do these neurons create a coherent thought? Well, it all starts with external stimuli. Stimuli can be anything that activates our sensory organs, sights, sounds, smells, and so on. For example, if you see a beautiful painting, photons of light enter your eyes and hit your retinas. The retinas then convert these photons into electrical signals that travel through the optic nerve to your brain. Once in the brain, these electrical signals are processed in various regions each specializing in different functions. The visual cortex, located at the back of the brain, is responsible for processing visual information. But interpreting a beautiful painting is not just about recognizing colors and shapes. Emotional and memory centers like the amygdala and hippocampus also get involved, pulling from your past experiences and emotional responses. These multiple streams of information converge and interact in complex ways, allowing you to experience the painting as not just a collection of colors and shapes, but as an emotionally resonant piece of art. In essence, this combination and interaction of electrical signals among neurons give rise to a thought. It's fascinating to think that the process I've just described happens in fractions of a second. But the speed shouldn't undermine the complexity. Each thought is the result of an intricate dance of neurons, each firing and connecting in a specific sequence. It is also essential to understand that the formation of thoughts is not a one-way street. Our thoughts are influenced by our beliefs, experiences, and even our emotional state at the time. For instance, if you're in a bad mood, the way you perceive and think about the painting might be vastly different from when you're happy. Now that we've discussed how external stimuli contribute to thought formation, let's talk about the internal mechanisms that shape our thoughts. Believe it or not, not all thoughts are a result of external events. Many thoughts actually originate within the mind itself, shaped by pre-existing knowledge, experiences, and even our subconscious. You see, the brain is not just a passive receiver of information. It actively interprets, filters, and makes sense of the incoming data. Your brain has stored vast amounts of information over your lifetime, from facts and figures to emotional experiences. This stored information plays a crucial role in how new thoughts are formed. For instance, when you read a book, your brain is not just recognizing letters and words. It's drawing upon your existing vocabulary, past experiences with similar texts, and even your emotional states to comprehend the material and form thoughts about it. This process is commonly known as cognition. Now, cognition is regulated by a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. Located at the front of the frontal lobe, the prefrontal cortex is like the conductor of an orchestra, coordinating various brain functions to produce the symphony that is human thought. It helps us focus on tasks, make decisions, and even regulate our emotions. When neurons in the prefrontal cortex fire in response to stimuli, either external or internal, they interact with neurons in other parts of the brain to form what we eventually recognize as a thought. The next question you might have is, 
What about spontaneous thoughts? You know, the random ideas or memories that pop into your head for seemingly no reason. Researchers refer to this phenomenon as mind wandering, and it's more common than you might think. Studies have suggested that we spend up to 50% of our waking hours in this state. Mind wandering can occur during simple tasks that require little to no cognitive effort, like taking a shower or walking. In these moments, your brain switches to a default network of activity, often termed the default mode network, or DMN. The DMN is a connected group of brain structures that are active when the mind is wandering and focused inward. It's thought to be involved in self-referential thoughts like daydreaming or planning for the future. This is why you may suddenly remember a childhood event or come up with a creative idea during these idle moments. Now, while mind wandering may seem unproductive, it serves important functions. For one, it allows the brain to consolidate memories, which in turn contributes to learning and problem solving. It's also closely tied to creativity. The unfocused nature of mind wandering allows for the free association of ideas, leading to innovative solutions and new perspectives. So far, we've talked about how thoughts are formed through external stimuli, how our stored information shapes cognition, and how even moments of idleness contribute to thought formation. But it's not just about individual thoughts. Our thoughts often link together to form a stream of consciousness, a continuous flow of ideas and sensations that make up our subjective experience. Up to this point, we've discussed the biological and neurological aspects of thought formation, but what about the role of language and culture? Indeed, the way we think is deeply influenced by the language we speak and the cultural norms we adhere to. Language is more than just a means of communication. It's a cognitive tool that shapes the way we perceive the world. Different languages have unique grammatical structures and vocabularies, which can influence how their speakers form thoughts. For instance, some languages have numerous words for different shades of a color, leading its speakers to perceive those colors as distinct, while others might lump them together. Linguistic categories can, in essence, shape cognitive categories, Similarly, cultural norms and values can affect the way we think. Consider social constructs like honor, freedom, or individuality. These concepts vary from culture to culture and influence how people within those cultures form thoughts about behavior, ethics, and even morality. For instance, in some cultures, collective well-being is prioritized over individual freedom which could shape how people from those cultures think about concepts like success or happiness. So, while the physiological process of thought formation may be universal, the content of our thoughts and how we interpret them can be extraordinarily diverse, shaped by our linguistic and cultural backgrounds. Now, what about the future of understanding thought? Research into thought formation is a rapidly evolving field Thanks to advancements in technologies like functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, and electroencephalography, commonly known as EEG. These tools allow scientists to monitor brain activity in real time, offering unprecedented insights into how thoughts form and evolve. And let's not forget the burgeoning field of artificial intelligence. By studying how machine learning algorithms think Researchers hope to gain further insights into human cognition, although we must remember that artificial thinking is fundamentally different from biological thinking. In summary, the formation of thoughts is a marvel of biological, psychological, and socio-cultural orchestration. From the firing of neurons in response to stimuli to the cognitive processes guided by the prefrontal cortex, and even to the influence of language and culture, each thought is a culmination of intricate processes. It involves not just one part of the brain, but a harmonious collaboration of multiple regions, each contributing its unique piece to the puzzle. And whether you're focusing intently or simply letting your mind wander, your brain is constantly at work, shaping your understanding of the world around you and, in essence, defining who you are as a person. And that concludes our deep dive into the fascinating world 
of how thoughts form. We've traveled from the microscopic realm of neurons to the broader spheres of culture and language, touching upon the state-of-the-art technologies that promise to unravel even more secrets of the human mind. Indeed, each thought we have is a testament to the incredible complexity and capability of the human brain, a subject that, undoubtedly, we will continue to explore and marvel at for generations to come.